All right, everybody, today we're gonna learn how to make these super cool mountain and watercolor landscapes. Aren't these beautiful? So we are actually going to be looking at some other examples by an artist, her name is Jen Arani, and she does all these really beautiful, teeny tiny mountain watercolor landscapes. So I'm gonna show you how we're gonna make ours, okay? So first we're gonna start with a little square of paper and a circle shape. So we are going to be tracing a circle. So hold your circle in place and lightly with your pencil just trace around the circle. There you go. And then the first thing you're going to do is draw a horizon line. So somewhere right around there, draw a line across Hopefully you can see that. So that's gonna separate our land from where our mountain is. The next line we're gonna make is the line for the mountains. And you want to be able to see, if I pull back my other example, you want to be able to see different peaks of the mountain. So don't just do like triangles up and down, you want them to look a little more natural, a little more organic. So some can be tall, some can be short, and you want it to go all the way across to the other side, okay? Next thing we're going to do is um, draw some lines across, just lightly across like that to kind of look like the land. And then we are going to be creating uh, these shadows I go back to this one. These little shadow areas on our mountain. So to do that, you're gonna start at the peak of each mountain and just kind of draw a line like that. Everywhere where there's a little peak, you're gonna make a little shape for a shadow. Just like that. And you can always go back and add in a few more. Right. Next thing we're going to do is draw some lines for trees and we want to show some perspective in this landscape. So we want it to look like the trees that are way back here look like they're far away and the trees that are closer to the front look like they're bigger and closer to you. So the lines for the trees, the further away they are, the shorter they're going to look. And as they gradually get closer to you, they're gonna get a little bit taller. And then when they're right up to the front, they're gonna be nice and tall. And it's okay if these kind of go in front of the other, it, that's fine. Actually, you know what, that one is right in line with that one, so maybe I will erase that little guy, scooch him over maybe on this side. Now they're not gonna line up. Okay, so that's kind of my pencil sketching. We are gonna come back and black line this after we paint the sky. And painting the sky, I think, is gonna be the part you're going to like the best. Now for painting the sky, if we look at this example, look at how cool all of these colors blend right into another. They kinda of like almost have little fingers that spread from one color to the next. I'm gonna show you how to get that super cool effect. So, I've got my water bucket here with a smaller size brush because we're working in pretty tiny spaces. And then I have different kinds of watercolors for you to use. I've got these regular watercolor trays, but I also have uh, some smaller cups of liquid watercolor. These look super dried out, but they will still work. The beauty of watercolors is even if it's dried out, all you have to do is add water to it and they will work again just fine. Okay, so let me get my different colors. All right, now the te technique I wanna show you with watercolors is one that's called wet on wet. That means you start with wet paper and you add color to the wet paper and that's what's gonna give that really cool spreading effect. So I have a wet brush here and I'm just going to start right here and paint just with water where the mountains are. I'm not gonna do the whole thing, 
I'm just going to start right here at the end. Okay, so there's a little bit of water there. Now I'm going to pick a color to begin with. I'm going to start with this purpley color. And my brush is wet, so I'm just going to dip in here and get the color a little bit wet. Now watch what happens. I'm just going to tap the tip of my brush right where it's wet. Oh, look at that! Look at how cool that is over here. Anywhere where I tap, because there's already water in that space, it just starts spreading. Now I can kind of drag my brush with the water out a little bit further. And maybe I'll even add more water here to bring it up. Now I'm going to switch to a different color. I'm going to switch to the blue. Just dipping the tip in and just doing little touches with the tip of my brush. And because we're doing, ooh, look at that. Because it's touching um, a color that's already wet, it's getting those cool little mixes happening. Now as I move across, I'm gonna keep adding just water to my brush and spread this along. And maybe I'll switch to this kind of pinky purple color and see how that mixes. Ooh, look at that. Isn't that cool? So I'm not going over any area too much. I'm being super, super gentle with my brush. If there are parts of your sky that you want to be a darker color, then put a little bit more of the paint on your brush and not quite so much water there. Look, that blue spreading really nicely. Look at that. It almost looks like a galaxy. Okay, I'm gonna switch back to this purpley. Mix in the purple. It's pretty dark. So if it ever looks too dark, just put a little more water on your brush. And then you can kind of scooch this back in and let it spread a little bit more. So just very gentle touches with your brush. And then I'm gonna, I've got clean water on my brush on this side because I want to have it look lighter on that part. Now the cool thing about watercolors is you can kind of work at it in layers. So I've covered the whole sky right now, but if I wanted to, I could go back on top and create another layer of color, which I could do right now while it's still wet. While it's still wet though, the colors are gonna keep mixing, which is fine if that's what I want it to look like. So if I go back over here, I can mix in some more color. But you could also wait and do it after it's already dried. That's kind of up to you. So the cool thing about this is everybody's sky is gonna look totally different. That's all gonna look beautiful. All right, so I'm gonna stop right there.